Well, good afternoon and welcome to Linear Fisheries. A down join with Liam, we're down on St John's. We've slotted into some swims that uh, have been selected really by, for us by Ian Roper. We have had a walk around both St John's and Manor. Uh, there wasn't really a lot to see to be massively honest. So we have gone on a bit of advice, but we are massively willing to move as always. Um, it's our last session that we're going to be doing really in the colder months. There's a huge cold weather system coming in over the next couple of weeks with figures down as low as minus eight in some areas. So we've got a feeling there's going to be a lot of lids on the lakes. Uh, as I say, I'm joined by Liam. Um, whenever we come fishing together, I'm always incredibly positive because you just bubble with positivity, mate. Oh yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll, uh, we'll have a few fish on this trip, as always really. Like, to be fair, I'm always confident of that. It is what it is. But as I say, it's... <laughs> The lakes aren't doing loads and loads of fish. I mean, if we would have looked for a safe bet, we probably would have gone on, onto Brazenose 1 because it is producing fish. Um, but there's that mystique about fish in St. John's and, and that does draw us to this lake, particularly on the venue. Um, so say we're in the low 30s numbers, rods are out, uh, the sun's just about to set, so we thought we'd do a quick sort of update of what we're doing. Uh, and we'll be catching up with you hopefully later on this evening, if not tomorrow morning with what we're doing, how we're fishing the venue and the spots that we found. We said hopefully we'd come back to you uh, this evening. It's just gone seven o'clock. Watching a little film, me and Liam tucked away in the bivvy because the winds are blowing up a bit. And uh, the alarm's gone beep. Liam's naffed off somewhere, I don't know where he went. I think it was rod. And uh, I've got out to my rods and it's a right hand rod drop back. Uh, the orange CR2 on a Ronnie. 27 and a half pound. Absolutely buzzing. It's freezing cold, the fish. We're going to take some quick shots, slip her back. The rod's already back out on the spot. We didn't waste any time on that, so we're going to slip her back very, very quickly and uh, rod's back out. Game on. this morning. Um, I had a quiet night myself. Uh, John's managed to land one and with the conditions being as they are, it's, oh, it's fair play to him. It's absolutely terrible conditions to fish in. Um, the sun's starting to come up now so um, we're going to bring the rods back in, redo them um, and trip a little bit more bait in. So see if we can get something something going here. So um, let's, get them, let's get it done. Let's get them back out and uh, let's try and get some more fish for you. Well, I would love to say we're going to do this in a lull in the action as it always seems to be, um, but it's not. We have had that one fish last night and to be honest, I'm absolutely over the moon with that. I don't think a lot more has come out of the lake, um, but yeah, I'm really, really happy with that fish. Didn't look as big as, as that when we got into the net, you know, we thought it was a, a mid to upper double. Over the moon that it went the way it did. So I'm just going to very quickly go through the bait that I've been using um, and before we go any further, the, I have changed how the bait that I actually use on the venue, to be honest. And that's down to one of my good friends, Mike Dagnall. Uh, he's done extremely well on the venue and he always says at this time of year, he uses boilies in as many different ways as he can find them. So I've used a bit of what I've always used, which is a particle approach, but massively blended with his uh, sort of opinions on boilies and it catching the better fish. I've got two buckets and they've got two different mixes, but I am putting both of them out, but I'm putting them out in different quantities. So I haven't made one master mix that mixes it all up together because I want more of this one particular mix than I do with the other. So the one that I'm putting the most in is this, 
which is crumbed up CR1 test bait. Uh, and that's three and a half kilos of that just completely blitzed down to absolutely nothing in the old crusher uh, with a couple of handfuls of hooked on baits maga mix. So you've got those little flecks of red and white that look a bit like maggots, but it's 99% uh, of that sort of crumbed up bait, which is a, a nut base mix with some other attractors added to it. So that's when I'm putting out, sort of when I'm putting out 10 spoms, for example, I'm putting out eight of that and then just two of this other mix. And then the other mix then, it's a bit more sort of substantial if you like. So you've got 12 mil CR1 um, uh, boilies in there, the steam baits. Uh, and then you've got a bit more of like chunky particle mix. It's got maize in it. It's got maple peas in it, other bits and pieces. So, so it's a bit more of a, a chunky mix if you like. So if you can imagine, or what I imagine is on the bottom there, is a carpet of this crumb with bits and pieces of the red flecks of the maga mix in there. And then on top of that is two or three bigger patches of sort of heavier baited areas. And the, the way that I'm sort of fishing them is, I've got three rods very, very close to each other with a sort of half a rod length between each of them. And that carpeted spread of bait all across them. So that's the way that I'm baiting and that's what I'm baiting with. As I said, the sun is back out now, it has got warmer, but there is still no action. And they say myself and Liam are sat at the front of the swims, having a chat and just completely keeping an eye on the water. The wind's pushing into us, it is a cold wind, but we're also not seeing anything on the back of that as well. So rods are back out, we've put a bit more bait over the top of them, and now all we can do is wait and see what's going to happen. Well, the inevitable pack up has nearly finished. Uh, it's been a tale really of two halves. With that fish so early on in the session, it did look optimistic, but the weather's been against us, mate, completely. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I've, I've tried, I think, everything that I could have. Um, I've had zigs, bags. I've been around the lake two or three times looking for fish. I just, just not seeing anything. That's it, that's it. And when there's nothing to see, it is hard to gauge what, what to actually go on. And so Roper, as we said, put us in these swims. He said that the last few fish that he'd seen and had come out, had come out from here. So the intel was great from up first off, but we only know of another fish and that was from the guy next door. So they were in and around here, but we think it's two fish in 48 hours out of St. John's. It's massively uncharacteristic of the venue. Um, but as I said, we're going to try and pack down now before it gets any worse. The sun, well, it's just literally just gone out. <laughs> but the sun has been up, um, so we, the kit's all dry. We're going to get it in the van and we shall catch you very, very shortly on our next adventure, wherever it may be.